Hi everyone, today I am doing the colouring scare tag which is a hashtag challenge that I was tagged in by Tamara and it's 19 questions I believe all about scary stuff and it's in the Halloween spirit so watch me colour this Jasmine Beckett Griffith illustration whilst I jabber on. Um, the first question is what weapon would you choose if you were living in The Walking Dead? So I had a good think about this. Obviously a machine gun would be brilliant if you had infinite ammo, but you probably don't and it's going to be quite difficult to make the journeys to find ammo and you'll probably get into loads of fights and things with other people who are looking to do the same. So I thought, no, nothing that requires ammo. So then I thought about melee weapons like knives and swords and I thought, well, that really requires you to get really, really close to the zombies, the walking dead and um, yeah, that's not always going to work out in your favour. So I decided on, with my son's help, a bow and arrow. So you can still get them from afar, you can get your targets from afar, but also you can recollect your arrows and it's probably quite easy to make arrows. So I thought, as far as ammo goes, arrows are probably the best thing. You can just go and rip them out of the head once you've done it. Um, you'd obviously have to get really, really good at your target practice, but I think you'd have plenty of time to learn a new skill. So question two is if you were paid to stay the night in a haunted house, would you? And how much would they have to give you? So instantly, definitely 100%. I've always, always wanted to do this. And it's kind of a bucket list thing where I'll go and spend the night in somewhere that's purportedly haunted and I'd be paying them. So <laughs> they wouldn't have to give me anything. I'd pay them. Um, I think it'd be a really fun experience. And as you know, I'm into all that kind of stuff. So yeah. What superstition slash urban legend do you believe? Well, well, there's there's just so many urban legends. In fact, I only watched Urban Legend, the movie, the other day. Um, and there's so many. So I was thinking like of all these different ones. I wouldn't say I necessarily believe any of them, except for maybe a couple. But here's a couple of urban legends. You've got the, the red ribbon, which is the girl with the red ribbon tied around her neck. And when she takes it off, her head falls off. <laughs> that was a story that we told when we were kids. Uh, there's Bloody Mary, of course. There's... Um, lots of creepy pasta, which is like podcasts and stories, ghost stories online that you can listen to on YouTube and stuff. And in those creepy pasta, you've got things like the Russian sleep experiment, which is supposed to have taken place in Russia. They did an experiment on, um, I think it was like ex cons or something. They put them in into a room and they weren't allowed to sleep. I think they put a gas in there that kept them awake and all the really freaky stuff that happened when you stay awake for too long. Um, that one's really creepy. Um, what else did we used to tell when we were at school? So say if you, if you were on holiday somewhere, somewhere exotic and a spider would crawl into your mouth when you were asleep and lay eggs in your cheek. And then all of a sudden there was a girl that I knew that all these spiders sprouted out of her mouth, you know, that kind of stuff, the chain letter kind of thing that goes on. Um, You've got When a Stranger Calls, which is, well, it's a film. I don't know whether it's off of an urban legend, but it's about when you're babysitting some kids and um, you get a call and it's coming from inside the house and they're saying, have you checked the children? Um, <laughs> I don't know if we're going into just movies now rather than actual urban legends, but um, one urban legend I definitely believe in, <laughs> which is a bit of a funny one because it's not really scary, but it's, you know, that song by Phil Collins in the air tonight? Of course you do. Um... I just definitely million percent believe that there is something behind that behind that song. I think some shit went down. Phil saw something. He saw somebody maybe, you know, not save someone from drowning, if we're going by the lyrics. Um, and, you know, he, he saw what happened and he made this song. Yeah, I definitely believe that something went down. That song didn't just come out of nowhere. <laughs> um, what else? I think that's it. The Mothman, that's quite, I think that's quite um, a believable one. The Mothman in, I think it's Ohio, the where it's been spotted. Um, yeah, so anyway. Number four, which horror movie did you never get over? So horror movies don't really scare me that much. Obviously, when I was young, they did. I was, you know, really scared of Freddy Krueger and, you know, all that stuff. That, that Those films sort of make me laugh now. But, um, thinking about films that have really sort of dug their heels in and, and have left me thinking about them for ages after, I would have to say Session 9 is a really, really creepy film. Um, it's set in 
It's set in an old mental hospital, an old mental asylum. And these guys have come in, I think, to get rid of it, asbestos or something. It's like a whole team of construction guys. And um, they find some tapes. One of them finds some tapes by one of the um, previous patients. And it's I don't really want to give a lot away, but it's a really, really creepy, atmospheric, um, really, really freaky film. So try and get that one if you can. Um Martyrs, Martyrs is a given. I think that's one of one of the films that everybody would say they've seen, and it just gave them a sick to the stomach feeling. Uh, the original Martyrs, that is. The Strangers as well. That one, that one got me not because of like the the weird masks and stuff or anything outward like that, but it was just the fact that these three people were going around messing with with this couple, just messing with them and freaking them out and torturing them and then they asked them why are you doing this and they said well because you were home like there was no reason other than that they were there and I think that's the creepiest thing is when you've got humans because humans obviously are the scariest monsters on the planet aren't they they can be so yeah that one really freaked me out um Poughkeepsie tapes if you've never seen the Poughkeepsie tapes it's a it's like a found footage film um and it's really sort of grittily grainily filmed and done it's very creepy and gross and weird um and the babadook and i know people might laugh at that because it has like a bit of a polarizing um a bit of a polarizing opinion with some people because it really freaked me out because i went to see it in the cinema and i knew that it had links to mental health and that was what the babadook was supposed to represent this monster was actually dealing about dealing with mental health and it was symbolic of of depression and um i don't know why maybe the cinema experience just heightened it for me but i just found it especially the last you know sort of half an hour super intense and i was like just blown away by it i thought it was amazing and uh, i'll tell you a story about that in a bit when we get to another question so yeah, um, what is your favourite scary and or Halloween colouring book? Super easy to tell you, it's all of the beauty of horrors, specifically the beauty of horror 4, which is creature feature, I think it's 4, um, that's one's all about horror films, so yeah, definitely one of my favourites. What is the scariest book you've ever read? So I haven't read that many stories, to be honest. I used to read a lot. And yeah, I still do read a lot, but it's mainly sort of like romance and stuff like that. Um... But my scariest, my favourite scary book, the scariest book I've ever read is probably The Exorcist. If you've read the book by William Peter Blatty, it is the scariest one I've read. It doesn't mean it's super, super scary, but I haven't read that many. And also there is a ghost story book, The Encyclopedia of Ghosts and Spirits by John and Anne Spencer that I grew up reading. And it's all about true um, ghost apparitions, presences, things that people have reported that have been true so like the Enfield poltergeist is in there there's a really freaky one about someone called Esther Cox who got um who got uh, had a poltergeist in her house and it was really really awful so yeah that's probably the creepiest book I've ever read so the next question is if you could be a scary monster which one would you be and as I said earlier humans are probably the scariest thing on the planet scarier than any sort of creature or monster you could make up really but uh, if we're going for classic monsters I think it'd have to be the vampire uh, purely because they are the sexiest of all monsters aren't they really you know they sleep all day which is brilliant <laughs> that'd be fantastic wouldn't it and they lure you in they've got that glamorizing thing with a hypnotic thing where they can lure you in and uh, they live in cool castles so you know what's not to love so yeah, I would say vampires. Where is the scariest place you've ever been? Now, this brings me back to the story I was going to tell you about the Babadook. Because I was thinking, where is the scariest place I've ever been? And I couldn't think of anywhere that freaked me out. I'll probably think of somewhere later and, be, and you know, be like, oh, duh, why didn't I say that? But so this is what happened after I saw the Babadook. As I said, it really got to me, that film. I don't know again whether it was because it was in the cinema the you know the surround sound and everything but it really just sort of like impacted me and I was really on edge coming out of that film I went to see it with my sister and uh, we'd parked in the multi-story car park I don't know what you call it in America but um, it's like the big big concrete blocks of car parks that have different levels and we got back to the car now just to preface this a couple of weeks before that we'd seen Annabelle and I'd 
freaked my sister out, played a little prank on her and pretended there was something behind her in the car and, and she like screamed and it was funny. So she obviously wanted to get me back for that and I wasn't expecting it. So we get to the car I get in my side, she's about to get in and she does that thing where she thinks, where she pretends that she's seen something behind me in the car and she's sort of like <gasps> gasping, looking behind me and because I'm already on edge, like I'm on a knife's edge, I scream and scream and I'm not just talking one, you know, one like jumpy scream, I screamed so loud and it just echoed and echoed off of the concrete walls of the um of the car park and like I say, I didn't just scream once, I screamed repeatedly and she absolutely doubled over laughing. And there was, a, I just remember there was a woman walking back to her car, like a bit further down. And she just, she just turned and the look on her face. I don't know what she thought had happened, but I was just absolutely, I, I don't know what, I was completely freaked out to the max. And her doing that at just that time when I got in the car, I don't know, it just, it was hilarious, but not for me. <laughs> It is looking back. But yeah, I would say that that car park that night is probably the scared, most scared that I've ever been. Um, so yeah, next question. Are you scared of the dark? And if so, what scares you most about the dark? Um, no, not at all. Again, when I was little, definitely. You know, if I just watched a scary film, because I did, I've started watching scary films from when I was about three or four. And um, even though they scared me to absolute death, I love them. I couldn't, you know, I love watching them. So yeah, always scared of the dark when I was little, but no, not anymore. It's it's what's in the dark, isn't it? The dark isn't scary, it's what's in there. So number 10, do you go to the toilet with the lights on or off after a scary movie? And if you have a closet, would you need to have the door fully closed to sleep? This is a bit of a silly question because everybody goes to the toilet with the light on if it's dark, don't they? Um, whether or not it's after a scary movie unless it's in the middle of the night when you've woken up and you're desperate for the loo and you sort of feel your way to the bathroom in the dark with your eyes shut because you don't want to lose lose the dream or lose the sleep <laughs> and end up being awake for the rest of the night so I think I think everyone does that but um, and as for the closet door no not bothered again if I was on a sort of a bit of a heightened state after seeing something I might sort of think oh I might feel a bit creeped out in the dark but no not really I'm hardcore. <laughs> uh, do you prefer to watch scary movies with others or alone? Definitely. Definitely alone, I think. Like, I don't mind watching them, but I, I, I like watching films with people as long as they be quiet. You know, like, I can't stand people talking through a film. I need to listen to what's going on. Um, so, yeah, alone, in the dark, sound up loud. You know, it doesn't bother me whatsoever. I don't get scared really that easily but when I do get scared I love the fact that something scared me like I'll rave about it I'll say have you seen that it's amazing and not a lot of films do that so um yeah alone in the dark sound up question 12 do you want to be a vampire zombie or werewolf and why again vampire sleep all day it's a no-brainer would you participate in the zombie run which is a city event that's like a haunted fun run if so would you be a zombie or a runner my uh brother-in-law's done this he said it was loads and loads of fun and I would but I'd probably shit myself like I'd, I'd be so scared of <laughs> just people you know when you're running you know when you're walking upstairs and someone runs up the stairs behind you that that freaks me out to the max like I'll scream I'll scream my head off I did say earlier that I don't scare easily that's that's true for films but in real life if you jump out at me I, I, I am the jumpiest person ever so um running from people who are dressed like zombies in the dark in the forest in the woods yeah, I, I definitely would be really scared. So, but then I think it'd kind of be boring to be one of the zombies. So I'd definitely be a runner just for that adrenaline hit, I think. Question 14, do you prefer gory, creepy, gory, creepy or cute and spooky? Definitely gory. Nothing wrong with cute and spooky. I do like the um, the pastel, pastel artwork that people do of, you know, people like um, Lydia from Beetlejuice and stuff like that. I've got quite a lot of creepy, cute artwork but definitely gory creepy for when I'm watching movies and stuff you know the gorier the better but actually that's not quite true it's not really about the gore it's more a psychological film that I like to see something that really digs its nails in and makes you think about it and it freaks you out psychologically 15 what scares you most about being home alone absolutely nothing <laughs> I would love to be home alone more than I am um it would be the peace just having no one here I'm very much somebody that has to be has to have alone time to recharge. 
Being around people doesn't energise me like it does extroverts. I'm definitely an introvert. I definitely need to recharge batteries and be on my own because being around people does drain me quite quickly. So nothing at all would scare me the most about being home alone. I'd absolutely love it. (laughs) Would you walk, would you rather walk through a cornfield or a forest in the dark? So this question I think is, it's a choice, isn't it, between Jeepers Creepers and Slenderman? Because Jeepers Creepers is, you know, he's famous for running through that cornfield and Slenderman is always in the forest. So who would I like to go up against? I think probably Slenderman because Jeepers Creeper, I don't think you'd have a chance, would you, how fast he is? Um, just it freaks me out more. Slenderman, obviously he can teleport and he does have those weird tentacles, but he doesn't scare me as much as Jeepers Creepers. So I'm going to go for Forest. If you could make a magic potion, what would it do and what ingredients would it take to make it? So this one is going to be a bit more of a serious answer because I thought if I could have a magic potion for anything, what would it be? You know, you've got weight loss, you've got, um, you know, the usual stuff, loads of money, etc, etc. But definitely if I could create a potion that would eradicate mental health illnesses, oh my goodness, I would do it literally in the snap of a finger um, because, you know, it affects me a lot. It affects people I'm very, very close to a lot. I'm going through a bit of a situation at the moment that I'm not going to get into with somebody very close to me. And it is just awful. It's awful to have mental health illnesses. And as as bad as physical ailments are, and I totally agree with that, um, mental illness is it's something else. You can't escape it. There's no painkiller for it. Um, yeah, so I would eradicate mental health. And what ingredients would it take to make it? And I was thinking about all the things that make me happy. So I've put chocolate. I'm writing these down, by the way. I put chocolates because, you know, chocolate, no extra explanation needed. Laughter. I don't know how you'd put laughter into a potion, but this is a magic potion. So you'd find a way. The ocean, because I think being by the sea is massively um, good for my mental health personally and a lot of other people as well. Fresh air, because it's always good to get fresh air, and a good book. Again, I did say earlier, I love reading, and I think getting lost in a good book has just that feeling that you can't emulate any other way. So chocolate, laughter, the ocean, fresh air, and a good book would all go into my magic potion. 18, what was your favourite Halloween costume of all time? Well, to be honest, uh, my Halloween costume growing up, as I'm sure plenty of you were if you're around my age was a cape made of bin bags and a whole you know a whole costume made of bin bags basically or trash trash bag trash bags do you call them in america um black sacks that you would put your rubbish in and it would have a hole cut in the top for your head and two holes for arms and that was literally the the costume my mum also made us a witch's hat out of a cornflakes cardboard box and covered that in black bag as well and then um we did spend a pound on some witch's fingers some plastic witch's fingers uh so yeah I've done some cool Halloween makeup on the kids that I might put up on the screen for you so you can see so I'm pretty I like doing um makeup and stuff like that but as for my Halloween costumes uh, actually now I say that I've just remembered I did have a Halloween party one year this was probably about 10 years ago no probably a bit more than that maybe nine. no hang on I don't know it was at some point in my past I had a Halloween party and I went as Papa Lazarou from the League of Gentlemen so if you've ever seen that it's a BBC program it's like a dark macabre comedy and so that was probably the best Halloween costume I've ever had and the final question who would you rather have as a friend Michael Myers Pennywise Alien Predator or Freddy Krueger and why So I think out of all of those, as a friend, I'd probably have Freddy because he's quite funny. (laughs) Now I'm looking at it as an adult, you know, now I watch it as an adult, it doesn't scare me anymore. It's quite funny, quite humorous. Um, So yeah, I'd probably have Freddy as a friend. I think Alien would just make a mess everywhere with all that goopy stuff. So couldn't be bothered cleaning up after Alien. Michael Myers is pretty boring, I think. I can just imagine him, you know, just sitting there, just sitting there looking. Um, Pennywise would 
likely stink because he's always in the damn sewer. <laughs> so no, don't want that around the house. And uh, who else have we got? Predator. Predator might be pretty cool actually because he could go invisible and spy on people for you. But his kind of mouth area would just freak me out. So I'm going for Freddy. Let's go Freddy. So that was the last question. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, went on a little bit longer than I thought I would. And the final thing is to tag three other people to participate in the colouring scare tag. And I'm not even sure who's done this so far because I haven't um, I haven't looked at any other videos. I know quite a few people have done it, but I haven't actually watched anyone's videos. So I'm going to have to have a good think about that. And whoever I tag will be in the description below. But yeah, hope you've enjoyed listening to me do these questions and watching me colour the illustration. It's from Halloween by Jasmine Beckett Griffith, the book. And I used luminance and Prismacolor pencils to colour it in. So thank you very, very much for watching and I will see you soon on Colour with Claire.